So, why are reflex gliders not reflex gliders and instead they're total complete freaking death traps only a freaking moron would fly? Let me explain what the deal is. So, let's take a typical paraglider. Alright, now, I am not an artist. Thank you. I would like to give kudos to any artists out there because I can't draw crap, but I can fly. So, and I know paragliders this is what I do. See, this is my talent is flying, not drawing. So here we have a paraglider. Now, what is reflex? Well, first of all, you got to know what reflex is. Reflex, oh great, now I got to draw a little paper airplane here. Let's say you have a little paper airplane, you know, we all made when we were a kid, blank little paper airplane, right? Well, reflex is when you tear out those little tabs at the back and then, or actually just tear like this, and then you fold those tabs up. Well, if you fold these tabs upwards, that way, if you throw the airplane down, it will automatically come up and try and loop. That's reflex. So if it dives to a negative angle of attack and you try and dive it down, the rear is sticking up like the pen, and that pushes up the front. Got it? That's reflex. On a paraglider, how do you push a string? <laughs> you can't push a string. Okay, so here's your paraglider from the side. You can't push a string. And even if you could magically push a string, the lines all come to a central point at a D-link. So pushing that string down does not make that string go up. So there is zero reflex to any paraglider. Also, think about a bed sheet for a second. If you push down on one side of the bed sheet, does the other side of the bed sheet come up? <laughs> No, it's a sheet. There is no reflex. Now, a paper airplane is basically rigid because it's, you know, stiff paper. So when the back is pushed down, that does pull up the front. This is reflex. This is not reflex. It is a total scam or a hoax. So the more accurate term would be hoax flex because it is not reflex. There's no such thing as a reflex paraglider. Totally absurd. So, what is it actually? What's actually happening? Alrighty. Boop, boop, boop. So, all they're doing is unloading the rear half of the wing. So, when you put your trims up, these lines whoop, are no longer taunt, they are slack. So you are only hanging from the front half of the glider. This side is just completely flopping. So the back half of your glider is literally a flopping bed sheet giving you drag. Okay, that's what's actually happening. Now, what that does is it cuts in half the size of your glider. So you just doubled the loading on this part of your wing. Now, all of your weight, 100% of the weight, is hanging only from the front of the glider. That's it. Um, now, if it was just wing loading, that could actually be a good thing because flying a smaller glider gives you more loading, makes gives you more stability, right? Okay, so that could be a good thing. The bad thing is, is it's the front half. So when they unload the glider, if you're looking at it from the top, you just unloaded your back half of your glider. So this back half is now just flopping, flap, 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 no loading. So what happened is your sort of safe, you know, aspect ratio here to here, which would have been maybe a, say 5.5 to one aspect ratio, so it's 5.5 times wider than it is deep this way. So it's wider than we deep. But if you cut it in half, what happens to your aspect ratio? Now it's an 11 to 1. 
because your glider is 11 times wider than it is deep. That's why you can't stabilize them. They are so unstable, they can't pass any level of safety certifications at all, period, zero, not A, not B, not C, not D, not go screw yourself. Doesn't pass anything. You take a collapse with that glider, you freaking die. Now, don't worry, it's much worse than that. <laughs> it's, you're totally screwed, okay? Because what you did is not only double your aspect ratio. Now let's explain aspect ratio for a second. A super safe glider is more of a, almost a rectangle, short and stubby. Like the Dominator has like a 3.8 to one aspect ratio. So it's only 3.8 times wide compared to how deep it is. Short and stubby, the more short and stubby it is, the more stable and safe because it's like a big parachute that's a rectangle and it wants to pop out and stabilize itself. The higher aspect ratio it is, the more deadly it is. So the highest aspect ratio gliders on the planet are cross-country competition gliders for paragliding, which get up as high as about 7.5 to 1. There's a couple that might be as high as 8, but they're kind of ridiculous. So typically they're about 7.5 to 1. Um, so many people died on them, they actually stop doing unlimited class, uncertified class, because they were so deadly. So they started going with an END class to at least try and get some sort of safety. So imagine an uncertified class comp glider with a 7.5 to 1 aspect ratio that zillions of people are dying on. Now, think about a hoax flex glider, not 7.5, but 11 to 1. 11 times wider than it is deep. So there is no stability whatsoever. When you take a collapse, it does not want to pop out. There is no natural stabilization to a piece of cloth. It doesn't want to stabilize. If you've got a nice, big, short, stubby rectangle glider that's ram air, you can wad the heck out of it and it wants to stabilize very, very quickly. That's why all of your safer gliders are lower aspect ratio. And, uh, Normally, they'll go to a higher aspect ratio, thinking that will give them more glide efficiency, which it does, but it doesn't. But that's a whole different story. <laughs> I set the world speed record on the Dominator, low aspect ratio. So the low aspect ratio is actually more efficient, but that's it heavily loaded. At lighter loading, the uh, high aspect ratio is generally efficient, but not in a hoax flex because a hoax flex is not a wing. So now think for a second of your wing shape, okay, your airfoil. Usually it's flat on the bottom, boom, and then you've got your airfoil. Well, what happens if you cut off and eliminate the back half? You just eliminated your airfoil. You don't have a freaking airfoil. I mean, imagine a Cessna and you cut off the back half of the wing. It ain't gonna fly so well. Now, it can fly through angle of attack, and it can produce lift through angle of attack, but it's very inefficient because you lost your, your airfoil profile, which develops that lift. So, because they're so inefficient, that's why they're so slow. That's why you don't see any of the hoax flex. Well, the Dominator set the world speed record. It's all about efficiency, 51 miles an hour. And there's no opinion to speed. Speed is a number, 51 miles an hour. If you can beat 51, post it, let's see it. Um, there's some guys out there that totally flat out lie, like Mark and Tugger, blah, 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 that flat out lie and they'll show you like this little half second screenshot of some GPS speed, which is a load of crap. If you wanna see if somebody's telling the truth, they've gotta show you the GPS clocked in both directions, back and forth, over and over, so you can see the differentiation between an upwind and a downwind and take the average to eliminate. So for the speed record, Dominator wins 51 miles an hour. Second something beats it, great, let me know, I'll buy it. Um, but back to safety. So for one, we're eliminating our airfoil shape. So they're horribly inefficient. They don't glide for crap, which is why zero paraglider pilots fly this garbage. Why would any paraglider pilot 
who has to have the most efficient glider fly a hoax flex wing? They wouldn't because they would immediately sink out. They don't have anywhere near the glide ratio of a super safe wing like the Dominator that has just under a 10 to 1 glide ratio. And some of the super high-end comp gliders like the EOS can make upwards of a 12 to 1 glide ratio. So the Dominator's not far behind, but that is if you compare a medium to medium. But I'm getting off track again. Let's get back to Hoax Flex Death Traps. Now think for a second that you have this 11 to 1 aspect ratio wing and you take a collapse. How's that going to recover? What's going to happen? Well, we know from vast experience exactly what's going to happen. When you take a collapse, it is going to be so violent, you're literally going to do a backflip 180 and it's going to lock you into a spiral face first into the ground. Bam, dead. Just like, I mean, I could name all the names and go through all the people who have died on Hoax Flex death traps, but that's what's happened. Now, there's another lie they tell people and they go, oh, it's more stable. False. Completely false. And very simple to prove, which I proved years and years ago, but the liars don't care, they just make up lies. So if you want to know which of these two gliders is more stable, how do you prove it? It's actually very simple. You just run them into each other. Bam! It's like scratching a diamond on glass. If you scratch a diamond or rub a diamond on glass, it's the glass that scratches, not the diamond. Well, if you take two paragliders and you just run them into each other, the glider that's more stable will cause the less stable glider to collapse. So I went out, trims up, trims down, either way, ran the gliders into each other over and over and over, and the hoax flex death traps always collapse first. Over and over, test after test, no matter how I did it, trying different people, using different gliders, every time this glider collapses first. It is nowhere near as stable. The Dominator is thousands of times more stable than a death trap. So not only does it have horrible efficiency, which equates to terrible speed because efficiency equals speed, but you also have the worst safety in the history of the sport and the worst stability. They're horribly unstable. But wait, it gets worse with the hoax flex design because you just unloaded the rear half of your glider. If you pull your brakes, you actually fold the glider in half and it causes it to collapse. So now you as the pilot have zero control of the pitch of the glider. So not only you can't even active pilot it. So any skill that you had or trained or learned all went right out the window because you can't pull the brakes. You can't control the pitch of the glider. You don't make the, the front end come up by pulling brakes and forcing the glider to a higher pitch. Doesn't work that way. You can pull a string, you can't push a string. Big, big difference. Strings are great for pulling. Uh, they don't push so well. Actually, they don't push at all. Can't push a string. So horribly, horribly bad. So you have zero active piloting. Well, a paraglider is thousands of times more stable when you're active piloting it because the pilot controls the pressure and feels the pressure. So when the glider dives to that negative angle of attack and you feel that pressure drop, if you hit the brakes, it pulls it back up and repressurizes the glider and you don't take a collapse. That's why a super with super skills with a dominator can fly right down the Grand Canyon in 100 degree temperatures in the middle of the day, right through the rotor in trashy air and not take a single collapse and not care about it even in the slight. But wait, it gets worse. <laughs> so because the pilot has no control, how do you steer the dang thing? You can't. There's no freaking steering. So what they had to do is come up with wingtip steering. So you have to actually snap in your original brake toggles and then grab secondary brake toggles, which is a royal pain in the butt because now you have two different sets of toggles 
And so it's a royal pain because the risers are so messed up, you constantly take off and have your risers all tangled and snagged and it's a total snarly mess. I mean, the, literally, the very first time I flew one, the risers were tangled. It's just ridiculous. You can actually watch the video. So it's a horrifying nightmare. But wait, it gets worse. Remember, you can't pull brakes. What happens if you land? How do you flare? Oh crap, you can't flare. So now, in Hoax Flex Death Trap mode, you cannot fly anywhere near the ground at all. Because if your motor were to die and you accidentally land, you cannot change the angle of attack, produce lift, slow yourself down, and set down for a nice landing. Like you can with the Dominator that is a perfect glider. You have one set of brake toggles, you pull brakes, you create lift, you land light as a feather. So the Dominator, you can fully accelerate full speed bar wherever you want because at any time, speed bar, no speed bar, trims up, trims down, doesn't matter, can't screw it up, you can still pull brakes. You're the pilot, you still have full total control of the good wings. But you don't have control of the total death trap pile of crap that they sell to people that are 70 years old who have no clue what even a paraglider is. It's a total nightmare. I mean, I literally had a guy that was 70 call me up and he goes, yeah, I bought a, uh, an ozone spider. I'm like, uh, dude, you realize that's a totally uncertified class death trap glider meant for experts only, even though it's such a pile of crap, no expert would fly it. So this is the biggest, most deadly scam in the history of the sport. But let's get back to that last part where you have no control of your lift. If you're near the ground and your motor dies and you're going to land immediately, you would have to pull the trims all the way down, stow the brake tip steering. Oops, now I'm running. Scam. Aha. Google tells you when it's a scam. Very nice. Okay, so. Your motor dies, all of a sudden, you've got to stow the wingtip steering toggles, pull the trims all the way down, grab the brake toggles again, and then try and flare for landing, all in a split second, which isn't happening. I almost crashed one into the water. It's just, it was so horrifyingly, incomprehensibly bad, it was like the stupidest thing in the world. I, I just could not even comprehend doing it. So, but it gets worse and worse, and worse, you got no control of your pitch. All you have is minor directional control because you pull down a wingtip, which creates drag to try and get a turn going on. But because of the very high aspect ratio, you have a very slow roll rate unless you have a tiny glider. But that, we haven't even gotten to that because the size of the glider is a complete lie. If they sell you a 26 square meter hoax flex glider, it is not 26 square meters. Because remember, you're cutting off half your glider. So how big is a 26 square meter hoax flex glider after you put it in hoax flex mode? 13 square meters. That's right. It's 13 square meters. So now you are flying an 11 square one. <laughs> Uh, 11 to 1 aspect ratio, 13 square meter, total nightmare death trap you have no control of. And you can't control the pitch. And they're slow. You're hanging from 13 square meters and they can't even beat like a 16 square meter dominator. It's retarded. But see, they lie really, really bad because they take their 13 square meter and they go out and go, oh, look, it's faster than a 26 square meter. Well, duh, it's 13 square meter. But if you try and compare a 13 square meter hoax flex glider or 12 square meter hoax flex death trap to even like a 16 or 20 square meter real glider, the real glider will blow it away. But you do have to compare more equal size to equal size. But the size doesn't even really matter because we're flying, the most accurate way to compare it would be equal lift for equal lift. Or the way I compare it 
is max speed to max speed. Because ultimately the question is, how fast can you go? That number is going to be dictated by, of course, the wing, the size, the weight, the altitude, and a big chunk of that is the power. Now, we can only carry so much power on our back because we can only carry so much weight on our back. So we're using, you know, the most powerful lightweight motor we can get right now, which is basically the Viterazzi, which is the best motor currently on the market. Now, if you take a Viterazzi motor and you accelerate uh, a hoax flex death trap and you put the trims up and you go as fast as you can until the point where you are full throttle and can no longer maintain altitude, that is max speed. So with a Dominator, I tested max speed at 51 miles an hour. With many hoax flex gliders, I tested their max speed at 36 miles an hour, 39 miles an hour. Some of them might make 40, 40 something. It's so pathetic and retarded, it's ridiculous. Why would you fly a glider that is horribly inefficient, is slower than crap, incredibly difficult to launch, doesn't handle for crap, you can't even do real acro on these total piles of crap because of how unstable and how they just don't handle properly because you don't have control of the wing. And it's also thousands of times more likely to take a collapse. And when it takes a collapse, you freaking die. Where's the logic? Wouldn't it make more sense to fly the glider that's more efficient, faster, slower, so you can launch and land much, much easier, and it's better in every single way. Every single characteristic right down the line, the Dominator utterly obliterates the total death trap. While the Dominator is also the safest glider you can really get. I mean, it's like the epitome of safety. It's, that's why we fly. I mean, I put my kids on a Dominator because it's the safest. Only a total freaking lunatic would fly a hoax flex death trap. So hopefully this gives you a bit of an understanding of why a wing like, you know, the Doberman or the, uh, uh, blah, 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 let's see, the Nucleon, the Ozone Spider and all this crap is so horrible. It's, and why so many people have died on them despite them being only, you know, like less than 1% of the market. It's kind of retarded because no real competent pilots actually fly them and so many people die on them, it's just astronomically deadly and foolish, not to mention they're horrible. So I actually offered someone $5,000 in cash just to launch the Hoax Flex Death Trap Glider with their heavy piece of crap paramotor. It's not really physically possible because another thing is these don't build really any lift until a much higher speed. Trims up, trims down, doesn't matter. It's just a horribly crappy glider that just doesn't produce really good lift. And so it takes a higher speed. And you can only physically run so fast with so much weight on your back. So literally every single characteristic about the death trap is horrible. There is no reason for so many people to die on a complete pile of garbage death trap when a $150 piece of crap ragged out paraglider from eBay would be way better in every single way. Literally, the worst pair, like some old paraglider from the 1980s would be better than the death trap. It's, it's so retarded, it's, it's hard to even comprehend. It's, it's like a total different mentality. It, it, the brains, these type of people, their brains don't function in a rational, logical type of manner. You try and, uh, you know, talk to these people about facts and specifics and they don't care. They just start making up lies and talking trash and just go off in every direction. It's like Democrats screaming racist, bigot, homophobe and thinking that solves every argument. It doesn't, I'm sorry, it has nothing to do with anything. So that's the problem. When these guys that are completely clueless, you know, they go, oh, this is new technology. Really? Why is it so slow? Oh, but it's faster. Uh, can you show me how fast? Can you show me the speed? Can you actually show me your clock speed? Please, anyone, show me the max speed of their hoax flax death trap. Oh, it's more stable. Okay, how about we make a $10,000 wager you fly your hoax flex, I fly my Dominator. We go fly through the mountains. 
Now, if yours were more stable, wouldn't you be safer than me? How about we go fly the mountains in 100 degree temperatures in the middle of the day in 30 mile an hour winds in the craziest conditions of all? Who's going to come back alive? Me. I've never even been injured. The Dominator, I've been through eight gust fronts on Dominators. I've even flown in gust fronts on purpose just to show how absurdly stable it is. You try and do anything like that, you're going to die. Perfect example is this last thing I went to, uh, Salton Sea, which is very frustrating because people are so clueless. But the second the wind picked up, there were five Dominators in the air and two hoax flex gliders landing as fast as they possibly could because they were scared to death and one didn't make it and he was knocked out of the sky by the slightest little turbulence, wadded up the piece of crap glider, it never recovered and he pounded straight into the ground, whap, straight into the ground. Not a single dominator so much as had a hiccup and we were just getting ready to go fly because we don't care about strong, heavy conditions. Whoop de doo, we got skills, we got dominators. We can fly in wild, crazy thermals all day long. That's what we do when you have the best gear. So there is absolutely zero excuse or reason to get yourself killed on any glider that they lie and claim is reflex, which we already showed does not exist. Don't fall for the scam and don't die. Any name brand certified paraglider is going to be thousands of times safer than any hoax flex death trap of any brand, make, or model. They are all the same because they're all using the same horribly failed technology from the 1980s. I wouldn't call that technology because it's so horrible. Usually technology represents the best. Right now, the pinnacle of technology is the Dominator. <clears throat> and the Dominator's been around a while. It's just never been beaten. So it's proven unbeaten technology. Would anyone like to race me? How about we race through the mountains in the middle of the day in 100 degree temperatures, right through the thermals in strong conditions? Do you think you're going to live on your hoax flex death trap? Don't be an idiot. Don't fly a, domin a, a stupid hoax flex. This stuff is garbage. It makes no logical sense. If it was better, I would fly it. I would put my kids on it. I've tested it. The first time I tested one, I almost died. I went out on a Paramania glider, just did a basic safety test, trims down, eh, it sort of passed. Uh, not safe, definitely doesn't come anywhere near a Dominator, but it sort of passed. Put the trims up 1.5 inches, the same asymmetric collapse, the glider did a backflip 180, shot straight at the ground in the opposite direction, leaving me with line slack, riser twist, and it took over a thousand feet to recover. I was wise enough to do that collapse at 3,000 feet. But many people, like Wolfgang, died trying to do a basic safety test on this horrible pile of crap design. He went up to 3,000 feet with a reserve, yanked one collapse, and it locked him into a spiral so fast and so hard, he passed out before he could even throw his reserve. Then, because these do not recover from a spiral, they just stay right in the spiral until they auger you into the ground, it does not recover. So if you pass out, you're dead. You're going to die. It's just going to stay in the spiral. If you point a dominator straight down into a spiral and let go of the controls, or pass out letting go of the controls, basically, the dominator will immediately recover all by itself from a spiral. It's a certified glider. It's a design to do that. You just let go, boom, it recovers from the spiral. This glider will kill you, kill you dead, and it's killed so many people. For anyone else to die in the exact same way is completely, utterly, idiotically unacceptable and as stupid as it gets. So do not fall for the hoax flex scam.